Hey dudes, Soul White Soltis here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today, I wanted to do something a bit different from my Memories of Vanilla series to shake things up a little and talk about something I care a lot about, dungeons. Now, as you might recall from my in initial introduction, I never really raided during official retail vanilla World of Warcraft. I did Anixia once, as well as UBRS and LBRS, which might be considered raids since they were 10 man when I did them, but that's about all I actually did. As such, my main instance content from level 1 until the Burning Crusade was dungeons. And man, I did a lot of them. Since my leveling experience took nearly a full year, and I was still a noob upon capping anyway, I spent a lot of time in dungeons. I've forgotten a lot about my experiences then, but looking back now, I still remember these five, for some reason or another, far more than the rest. So, without further ado, here are my top five classic World of Warcraft dungeons. Number five, Zolferic. So back when I was first leveling my priest, Sylvite, I hit a wall around level 45 to 52. I'd gone to Tenaris and eventually got a quest for this dungeon. Over the next few weeks of my time in this bracket, I must have run this dungeon at least 10 times, and many many more since then. Zulfaric is the quintessential dungeon for the late 40s in Classic WoW. There are tons of mobs which allow for great amounts of grinding experience, a bunch of quests, including the one that awards the carrot on a stick trinket, and lots of great loot to be had within. Plus, it's got one of the most interesting boss fights of, in any vanilla dungeon in my opinion. The altar encounter where you release the prisoners then fight hordes of trolls as they run up the stairs. Sure, it can be a bit time consuming if you clear everything along the way, but it's still a wonderful dungeon that has given me tons of memories and fun over the years. And that's why it's here at number five. Number four, Upper Blackrock Spire. Now, I know that this can technically be considered a raid, but if you asked anyone back in the day, they would have said that it's a 10-man dungeon. You could also argue that LBRS and UBRS are the same dungeon, Blackrock Spire, which is true. But for me, UBRS will always be its own dungeon. When I first hit level cap back in the day, this was one of the first dungeons I did with my friend, Leica. And though I'd done Stratholme and Skullamance by that point, this was really where I started to get a taste of the epicness of endgame content. Running around the dragon-infested halls with nine other players, getting destroyed by whelps in the rookery, and eventually, after many deaths, getting to the top just before the final boss, then getting knocked off the bridge to my doom, were some of the best memories I have of vanilla as a whole. Plus, as any World of Warcraft player knows, this is where the infamous Leroy Jenkins video is set. Leroy Jenkins! I ran this dungeon so many times back in the day for my chest piece, and every time I learned something new about myself as a priest, as a player, and as part of a team. And I loved every run we did. For that reason, it's my number four. Number three, Scarlet Monastery. Scarlet Monastery, the dungeon for players in the 30 to 40 level range. With four wings, tons of bosses, and some of the best loot and quests until this point, you'd be hard pressed to find a better place to go when you're sick of getting ganked in Stranglethorn Vale. First off, the graveyard. Now this wing was super short and quick from what I can remember. And though there weren't really any quests for Alliance as far as I can recall, it was still fun to do because you could start doing it from level 29 or so. The super memorable boss, Interrogator Vishas, was in here as well. And his shouting about ripping the secrets from my flesh still ring in my mind whenever I think of this dungeon. Across the hallway was the library. Now, admittedly, I hardly ever did this level 33 to 34-ish wing of the dungeon, 
But it was still necessary, as it was how you got the Scarlet Key, the item that unlocked the armory and cathedral wings. There were some quests here if I remember correctly, but it was definitely less memorable for me than the other two wings. The armory, next to the library, was definitely a big step up in difficulty, and really started to show some difficulty for weaker groups. Tight packs of mobs, patrols, and some great and memorable experiences were had here. Plus, on my warrior, and eventually on my paladin, this is where I got Herod's shoulder, the last male armor I'd get before level 40. Super fun and super memorable. The cathedral was my favorite, though as it just had some of the most epic pulls and wipes of any dungeon that I have ever experienced even to this day. It really felt like a big step up from the other three and added a level of progression even to this single multi-winged dungeon. The trash was tough, with so many random patrols walking up and aggroing anyone that stood just slightly apart from the group. After getting up the stairs by the fountain and reaching the door, you had to clear everything, and I mean everything, in the cathedral itself before pulling the boss, Scarlet Commander Mograine. Otherwise, mobs would run out from all of the rooms and hallways and wipe the floor with you. Plus, after defeating Mograine and damaging High Inquisitor White Mane enough, you had that epic moment where she would stun the whole party and resurrect him making you fight both of them at once. Combine that with the hidden undead boss, High Inquisitor Fairbanks, behind the wall in the back room of the cathedral, and you've got one engaging and fulfilling dungeon. And that's why Scarlet Monastery is my number three. Number two. The Dead Mines. Okay. As a WoW player that started the game with a human priest, the Deadmines has to be on this list. It was my first dungeon, and as such, it holds tons of memories and nostalgia. Back in vanilla, you had to do a long and epic quest chain in Westfall to discover the mysteries of the Defias Brotherhood, eventually exposing Edwin Van Cleef as the mastermind behind the organization. There was great lore behind this dungeon, and as such, you felt really invested when you went in. Even getting to the dungeon felt like an adventure. As I described in my Memories of Vanilla series, it was easy to get lost in the caves underneath Moonbrook as a new player. There were tons of elite mobs and an entire undead section outside the dungeon to complete, so you really needed to have a group invested in completing everything if you wanted to get it all done. Plus, when you finally reached the dungeon and made your way inside, you were greeted by winding tunnels, varied rooms and caverns, and a massive freaking ship behind a door that you had to blow up at the end. The bosses were fun, albeit simple, and the experience felt really rewarding for a new player. Plus, the last boss, Edwin Van Cleef, had this really tough mechanic for unskilled groups, spawning bodyguard ads every so often that you would need to crowd control or kill ASAP. Otherwise, they would destroy your healer and wipe your group. It really taught new players how to cope with unforeseen circumstances and come together to defeat a common enemy. With interesting fights, tight packs of mobs and patrols, and the epic reveal of the ship at the end that you had to fight your way to the top of, the Deadmines has definitely earned its place as number two in my top five classic WoW dungeons. Of course, there are some dungeons that just couldn't fit in the top 5, so here are some honorable mentions. Stratholm Now, Stratholm is a wonderful dungeon, and it has two different paths, Live, or Scarlet, and Undead. I did Stratholm many, many times back in the day, and I remember that 45-minute Baron runs were all the rage, and also super tough to complete back then which might seem absurd to a player of modern WoW. It was a dungeon that really taught me about mana management and careful pulling, as I was a priest and that was very important. I'm sure a lot of Warcraft 3 players hold this dungeon near to their hearts, along with Wrath of the Lich King's The Culling of Stratholm. 
However, since I didn't play Warcraft 3 before doing this dungeon back then, it's just not as significant to me. However, it's still a great dungeon with great bosses and awesome loot. And I, for one, cannot wait to do it again when World of Warcraft Classic releases next summer. Wailing Caverns As an Alliance player for most of Classic, I never really had a reason to go and do Wailing Caverns. However, I did go when eventually leveling a Tauren Druid toward the very end and this place blew me away. What VC is for Alliance, WC is for the Horde. A sprawling underground labyrinth with twisting passages, tons of bosses, and of course, the single greatest obstacle in Vanilla WoW. That one jump that everyone missed once. If you did WC back in the day, you know what I'm talking about. Wailing Caverns is definitely not my favorite dungeon by any means, but it still deserves to be mentioned for what it was. And I'm glad that I'll get to experience it as it was come next summer. Maradon. Alright, so Maradon is one of those dungeons that I have a love-hate relationship with. I love the huge sprawling labyrinth that it is, with tons of bosses and good loot for the mid-40 range. However, I absolutely hated it for those same reasons. It just never ends. Still, I thought that I should mention it at least because of a personal memory of mine. Back when I did it for the first time on my friend's account, I got hopelessly lost. That day, he actually came home from work early and tried to log in to play, which continuously kept kicking me off the server until I called and begged for him to let me at least finish the dungeon. After that, it still took about an hour or two to finish. It was also used in one of my favorite WoW music videos of all time, She's Too Fat For Me, which always reminds me of my adventures trying to finish this beast of a dungeon. Yeah, my reasons are a bit personal and don't really reflect the dungeon itself, but it's because of these memories and experiences that I thought it deserved at least a mention here. And of course, as with everything, there is some crap in with the gold. Here are some dishonorable mentions. Nomergon. Long, confusing, crack quests, and overall just a horrible experience. I think I was able to finish it once or twice back in the day, but oh my god, I never ever want to do that again. The mobs are all too closely packed and it was possible to aggro the entirety of a wing at once by standing too close to that ledge going down to the final boss. Absolutely horrendous design. It's one of the only places that I was happy to see redesigned and tuned as the game progressed over the years. Seriously, screw original Nomergon. The Temple of Atalhakar, Sunken Temple. Long, Confusing, circular, and possibly the most convoluted dungeon experience in all of Vanilla WoW. There were only a few quests that led here, and it's located in the Swamp of Sorrows. So for an Alliance member, it was such a pain in the butt to get to. Really though, the multiple floored circular design and the puzzles that needed to be completed in order to finish the dungeon just made this an absolute headache and a half to complete. Screw this place too. All right, with all of those out of the way, let's finally move on to my number one favorite classic WoW dungeon of all time. Number one. School is in session. Skull Immense. If I had to choose one word to describe Skull Immense as a classic WoW dungeon, it would be this. Perfect. First and foremost, this dungeon is the conclusion of a series of quests in the Western Plaguelands that sees you fight off tons of undead and uncover the true nature of this school of necromancy. Eventually, the quest chain rewards you with the skeleton key, allowing you to open the door to the dungeon and go face the monsters within. Lore-wise, it's amazing. It's also pretty close to Chilwin Camp too, so it's really easily accessible for Alliance players though the Horde have a bit longer of a run from the Bulwark. The dungeon itself is epic, 
Upon entering, you are greeted with two skeleton guards in front of a gate that needs to be opened. After defeating them and entering the school proper, you get a view of the sheer number of mobs in this dungeon from the top of the staircase. I remember the first time going in here and thinking to myself, whoa, that is a lot of trash. Well, before getting smacked around by the patrol that walked up and down the stairs there, that is. Anyway, the trash is fun in its own right, with lots of CC opportunities, especially for priests with Shackle on Dead, tight packs, and more than a few patrols spread throughout. On top of that, there are over 10 bosses in this place, 13 in total if you don't count the additional bosses for events and quest chains, and up to 17 if you include all bosses, mini bosses, and event bosses. So, in basically every room, you can expect to find a boss in some form or another. Many of them are optional, however, such as Jandas Barov in the basement, but all of them had some bit of loot that a party member might need. That's really one of the biggest reasons I loved Skullamunds back in the day, the team effort it fostered. I noticed that as I got groups and ran with people, we all had different reasons for going to Skolo. One person might need Jandis for their tier zero piece. Another might need the Paladin Epic Mount quest in Rattlegore's room, while another might just be there to finish up the quest line. We'd all have to stick together though, as there was only one dungeon with all these paths. It wasn't a place that you could split into wings like Live or Undead Stratholm or UBRS LBRS. It was one place, Skullamance. Plus, once your party got through everything, cleared all the rooms, and got Darkmaster Gandling to spawn at the end, you were in for a treat. Gandling by far is the most interesting dungeon boss in classic World of Warcraft, in my opinion. Sure, at first it seems like a fairly normal tank and spank encounter, until he starts teleporting players into random rooms and locking them in. I remember as a priest, and the healer, getting locked into a room and being unable to kill the skeleton adds fast enough to get back out and back to my group. And I remember that this wasn't a one-time thing, it happened a lot. The teleport roulette made the boss fight interesting every time and always kept me on my toes whenever a group would fight this boss. Easily one of the most fun bosses I've ever fought in a World of Warcraft dungeon in any expansion. Back in the summer of 2006, I ran this dungeon on a nearly daily basis, and I never got sick of it. Eventually, I didn't need anything from it at all, but I still grouped with random pugs just to do it, since I wasn't a raider and had lots of free time anyway. It was such a fun and engaging dungeon that I never got bored of it, not even once. The bosses, the atmosphere, the loot, and the teamwork, they all made Skull Immense the amazing dungeon that it was. And while the other dungeons in this list were really hard to place, there was never any doubt in my mind as to what number one would be. Skullamance is, in my opinion, the best classic World of Warcraft dungeon, and I absolutely cannot wait to get to 60 and to run it again when WoW Classic launches next summer. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If you did, let me know by posting a comment down below. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter, or check out my blog with similar content. I look forward to seeing you there. Until next time guys, take it easy.